Chris, what possibly could be our third main topic today? Mm, this comes from Kylo Ken. John, the axe of Zaslov is at, at it again. According to Variety, WBD has decided to kill the Batgirl movie. Apparently, the film was a project that was under the old regimen, and the new powers that be at WB didn't feel that the film was big enough to be worthy of a theatrical run yet. Oh, yet at the same time, it was too expensive to put it onto HBO Max. Therefore, they're just going to have a tax write-off on it and scrap the film. How do you feel about Zaslav taking the axe to such a high-profile project? Are there any film series he won't take his axe to? Can't wait to hear your thoughts. As always, bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for saying that in. And of course, yesterday, wow. shockwaves uh, across the, the fandom and entertainment industry. We didn't believe it. No, like, like yeah, at first it's like, well, wait a minute, there's a report. Of course, it first came out in a report in the New York Post. Yeah. It's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so Warner Brothers hasn't officially commented on this and blah, 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 and what's going on. And I read it before I went to lunch. I'm like, come yeah. on. Yeah. Yep, but as the news started trickling in, it's like, nope, that's what happened. They canceled a film that was already made. Granted, not 100% complete, but it was already shot. Good enough that they had done some test screenings. And... They literally just stepped on the pedal, lifted the lid to the can, and dropped it in the trash and said, this is gone. And I'm going to say something that no one is going to agree with, but I'm right. <laughs> it's real leadership. This is something Warner Brothers has not had in a long time. Real leadership that is willing to make tough, financially difficult decisions and not be short-sighted, but rather decisions based on the idea is what is the for the long-term benefit of our properties and our brand and our fan communities, what is best for us long-term? And I'll explain why I think this was, while I'm very shocked, I'm incredibly shocked by the move because, you know, I'm very pragmatic. I, I'm the type of guy who says, well, drop it in theaters, make your 40 million bucks. So at least then you got 40 million more dollars than you do before. I've said that many times. And that's my first thought, right? But what if it ends up costing you more to do that? And we'll talk about that in a second. So let's start with this. Let's jump over to the Campia classroom for a second because we're going to look at a, a couple of comments and quotes that came out. And like we said, the New York Post was the first one to kind of come out and break this news. And this is what they said. There were test screenings, and those tests were said to be so poorly received by moviegoers that the studio decided to cut its losses and run for the sake of the brand's future. Listen to that line again. They decided to cut their losses and run, not for the sake of not getting embarrassed with this movie, but for the sake of the brand's future. We'll talk about that more in a second. It is a DC disaster. They think, their source told them, they think the unspeakable Batgirl is going to be irredeemable, the source said. And that, again, comes to us from the New York Post. Now, they're not the only ones. They're not the only ones. Because the folks at Collider, who I have a little bit of experience with, they said the following. They said, let's scroll that down a bit, Jonathan. They said, <laughs> um, this is from Collider. We spoke to people that saw Batgirl, and they said it was a, quote, huge disappointment. Huge disappointment. Also, that the costumes look cheap, especially uh, Michael Keaton's, which is surprising to me because we saw Michael Keaton's costume in the Flash or in the supposed alleged Flash movie, mm -hmm. and it <laughs> a, it actually it looked pretty good. But again, Collider is saying uh, we spoke to people that saw the Batgirl, and they said it was a huge disappointment. Also, that the costumes look cheap, especially Michael Keaton's Batman costume. And we all kind of commented on Leslie Grace's costume looked a little weird, but we just assumed oh, that we'd I change. We just uh, most of us assumed they would change the costumes mm -hmm. through the movie, uh, especially Michael Keaton's costume. I figured Warner Brothers would just dump it on HBO Max but it looks like we will never see it. Also, it didn't stop there. Former editor at The Hollywood Reporter said the following. They said, the word for a while uh, with insiders was that, was that the film Batgirl was beyond salvageable. The question of it, would, would it, the question I should say, the question is, would it do more harm than good to the brand if we released the film? Several times had been raised. That several times the question became, this thing is so bad is if we re release this thing, is it just going to do more harm to our DC brand than good overall by releasing it? 
I myself decided to reach out to a Warner Brothers source yesterday. Our staff here in the office know who it is. We won't say. And the source I spoke to, I simply sent them a, a quick message. Quick message. Remember, I haven't seen the movie. I just sent a quick message that says, ouch. It said, is it really that bad? To which the person in question wrote back a simple little reply, it's really that bad. As a matter of fact, pretty much across the board, uh, most people I've spoken to and whatever said that the movie was in really, really rough shape. Now, the best, the best, most glowing review of Batgirl, the most positive thing I found <laughs> of anybody who talks about having seen it and whatever comes from Deadline, and Deadline wrote the following. There's been met speculation on why Batgirl was canceled, having to do with it being a bad movie. Our sources said that the film tested once and the results weren't that bad. The most glowing, positive thing out of my sources, other outlets, New York Post, other places like this, the most positive, glowing thing that was said about it was, not that bad. <laughs> That's the most positive one out there. But I wanted to make sure we at least highlighted that and mentioned uh, what had been said here. So the first thing I want us to put in mind, um, there's, there's three main points I want to put on the show, okay? Point number one, from all intents and purposes and everything we're hearing, is that the movie was a disaster. Now, you know I have been excited for this movie. I was over the moon when they announced Leslie Grace was going to play Batgirl. After what I saw her do in, in the Heights, so when good. they announced her, I'm like... Boom! I cannot wait to see what this girl does with this role. So you know me. I've been very excited for this movie, but I had not seen it. And just and and again, I cannot sit here and definitively say that this movie was terrible because I myself have not seen it. I am simply going on all the various things that I've heard from my own personal sources, from other outlets in the industry, and from the major trades that are, are writing certain things about it. So first thing on the shelf is this. The movie apparently was a disaster. Okay? That's the first thing up there. So... In asking the question about why would Warner Brothers just straight up cancel this thing, first thing on the shelf is it looked like it was a disaster. But also the second thing I want to put up on the shelf is that this represents a complete rejection of the former Warner Brothers CEO's Jason Kalar's philosophy of HBO first. Remember, it was Jason Kalar who made the monumental historically idiotic decision to take an entire year's worth of films and just dump them all on HBO. It broke all their relationships with other production companies, with management, with talent, all that kind of stuff. They violated several agreements that had to pay out hundreds of millions of dollars and make up money and all that kind of stuff. And ultimately, financially, it nearly killed them. So David Zaslav coming in and now taking over, he has a completely different philosophy, and this represents a complete rejection of that because he said this. He said, there has been, this comes up from Deadline, there's been much speculation in the background. Oh, wait a second. That was the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. The bounce below. There we go. Page. Sorry. There are several threads here, wrote Deadline, but the moves amount to an emphatic rejection of the Warner Media CEO Jason Kalar's strategy to make original $70 million live action and animated films directly for the streaming site. And as you read through a lot of the other trades, they're also kind of affirming that, that this is basically David Zaslav saying, yeah, the last owners here were idiots. The last owners here greenlit a Wonder Twins movie and spent money on developing a fucking Wonder Twins movie. And they took care of that right quick. They said, no, 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 no. And everybody goes, oh, well, why does the general audience see DC movies as second-class citizens to Marvel? I don't know. You had morons greenlighting a fucking Wonder Twins movie. Form of toilet bowl water. <laughs> yes. And Zaslav has said, no, 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 no. The way they ran business before I came in is not going to be tolerated here. This is not the way we are going to do business. They have been running us into the ground. And we are not going to allow these properties, these classic, celebrated, iconic properties to be treated like the trash the previous owners treated it like. So first things first. Oh, yeah, we shut that Wonder Twin shit down right quick. <laughs> but they hadn't spent $70 million, $80 million, $90 million as the Batgirl 
budget ballooned and ballooned and ballooned. They hadn't spent that money on Wonder Twins. Because of reshoots, trying to fix something that was already broken. Trying to fix something that was already broken. And there were some other problems, too. But, you know, they had spent money on Wonder Twins just getting that all put together, but they hadn't shot the movie yet. So that was an easy fix. Easy fix. Just kill it. And what did we all say when they killed it? We all celebrated it. We were all like, oh, thank God, somebody over there now has some common sense. So they canceled it. So this kind of represents an absolute rejection of the strategy that the previous ownership at Warner Brothers had. So that's number one thing on the shelf is apparently the movie was a disaster. Number two thing up on the shelf was this is an emphatic rejection of the previous philosophy that the Warner Brothers people brought that were in danger of running everything into the ground. The third prong on this trident, and get my Aquaman reference there, the third prong on this trident, besides the fact, apparently the movie was terrible, that this is a rejection of the previous philosophy of how they approach movies, was that they saw that the only possible way they could financially recoup any of their losses was by not putting out in theater. They thought they had a better chance of recouping their losses simply by throwing the movie out and getting the tax benefits from it. Now, I'm going to read this at length. It's a little bit long. But follow along with me here, okay? This comes to us from Variety, who wrote a little bit at length about this. But again, I think it's worth reading because it's, it's quite interesting, okay? It starts with this. Several sources note that Batgirl was under a different regime at Warner Brothers, headed by Jason Kalar and, and Sarnoff, who we have some other things to say about a little bit later. But that was singularly focused on building its streaming service, HBO Max. That effort included Kalar's infamous decision infamous decision is a kind way to put it, infamous decision to release the studio's entire 2021 theatrical slate simultaneously on the streamer, which helped build the subscriber base, but also jeopardized the studio's reputation. Let's scroll that down a bit, Jonathan. Also jeopardized the studio's rep uh, uh, reputation with top-tier talent, though many agents and stars privately came to appreciate the move when the company paid generous bonuses as make nice. Cost the move the studio literally with all the bonuses they had to pay out hundreds of millions of dollars. Batgirl find found itself on the bad end of that decision. Apparently, neither good enough to feel worthy of a major theatrical release, nor small enough to make economic sense in an increasingly cutthroat streaming landscape. Let me read that part again. Neither good enough for a major theatrical release, nor small enough to make economic sense in an increasingly cutthroat streaming landscape. Spending the money to expand. Uh, the scope of Batgirl for theaters, let me try this again, spending the money to expand the scope of Batgirl for theaters, plus the 20 million to 50 million needed to market it domestically, and the tens of millions more needed for a global rollout could have nearly doubled spending on the film, and insiders say that was a, a non-starter at the company's newly focused on belt tightening and the bottom line. Releasing the movie on HBO Max would seem to be the most obvious solution. Instead, the company had shelved Batgirl along with Scoob, the sequel, and several sources say it will almost certainly take a tax write-down on both films seen internally as the most financially sound way to recoup the costs. This thing was apparently so bad that they were like, we can't put this in theaters because it's not going to make anything and we're not even going to make back the money that it's going to cost us to finish the film, market the film and roll it out internationally. We're not going to make any money off just dumping it on HBO Max because nobody's going to sign up for HBO Max who isn't already signed up for HBO Max to watch this Batgirl movie. The only possible way we can financially somewhat recover from this is just to trash the film and get the tax write down on it. That's the situation that they found themselves in. Now, many people may ask, well, my goodness, why didn't they kill this movie halfway through the production? Because that was different ownership that made these deals. Now, I said at the beginning of this that I see this move, while it totally shocked me at first, as great leadership, and here's why, that this, I believe, is incredibly bold, decisive leadership on the part of the new ownership at Warner Brothers. They have just shown me, as one individual fan, that they are absolutely committed to changing the direction of DC. Absolutely committed to changing the direction of DC. We have heard, and we've talked about this over the past few weeks, we have heard from all the outlets that to David Zaslav, their number one priority right now is to get what he sees as their most valuable asset, which is the iconic DC canon and writing the ship. Because whether you're a huge DC fan or maybe you're a DC hater, I think we all agree, 
the public perception is that the DC movies are second-class citizens compared to the Marvel stuff. And David Zaslav is not on my watch. And so if your number one priority is to say, we are going to change the way people see the DC content. We are going to change. We are making this our priority. So people see DC content the way it deserves to be seen as premium, first-class stuff all the way. Here's the question then. And this is basic leadership 101. If you say you have a number one priority, then your smaller decisions need to reflect that priority. And the question became, does releasing a subpar Batgirl movie that we think is going to embarrass us, does that help us change the image of DC movies? Or does that hurt us with our image of DC movies? And if the answer isn't, it helps us. If the answer isn't, yeah, putting Batgirl out is totally going to change the way people see DC movies. If that's not the answer, then you need somebody with the balls in leadership to say, then you know what? We're going to eat whatever financial losses there are because DC fans deserve better. The DC properties deserve better. The DC brand deserves better than for us just to schlock out shit just because we made it. And people will say, well, we want things to change. Well, we want things to change. Well, if you want things to change, then people are going to have to start doing things differently. You can't get somebody who's mauled by a tiger and go, I'll slap a Band-Aid on it. No, you're going to have to do something drastic. If the LA Lakers say... Sports analogy, sorry. But if the LA Lakers say our number one priority is to become younger and faster, if they say that, oh, and by the way, uh, we uh, we signed Shaquille O'Neal to come out of uh, retirement and help us out. Well, that, that makes no sense. If your priority is to get younger and faster, make decisions that make you younger and faster. If you say your priority is to elevate the DC content to where it deserves to be, then putting out a crappy movie, again, I haven't seen it, but these are just reports, a crappy movie that went over budget and is not going to help you, then putting that out becomes counterproductive to what your primary goal is. Now, people will then say to me, and I got in some discussions online last night, well, this is disrespectful to the people who made the movie. I'm sorry. It's Warner Brothers movie. They paid for it. You have to do what is right by your entire company, by everybody who works for you, for all the future filmmakers who are going to come and work on your projects. When you go into a restaurant and you order a steak and it comes back and it's, it's completely overcooked and it tastes like char and it's bad, do you just go ahead and eat it and say, well, it would be disrespectful not to eat the steak? No. You're going to go, I paid for it. This is my steak. This does not work for me and what I want for my dinner, so I'm not going to eat it. And this is one of those situations where I think this was Warner Brothers going, and again, this is all predicated on an assumption. Of course, assuming just makes an ass out of you and you, but it's all predicated on the assumption of all these reports that the movie was that bad. And who knows? Maybe I would have seen Batgirl and I would have said, well, shit, I really like that. Maybe I would have loved it. I don't know. I'm simply going off this thing from what I've heard from everybody else, including my own inside Warner Brothers sources, to say that the movie was quite crap. And if the movie is quite crap, you tell me. What is better for the DC brand? Put out another crappy movie or kill it and say, no, 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 no. What we want to put in front of the audiences is quality. It's quality. And so, yeah, I... Until And listen, I reserve the right to change my opinion on this when we get new information, because as new information comes out, intelligent people alter their perception of things, and we'll see once new information comes out. We want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Peacock's new series, The Resort. In Peacock's must-see new series, there's more than just trouble in paradise. There's a flip phone, a disappearance, and a suspiciously timed hurricane. The Resort, a new Peacock original from the creators of Palm Springs and Mr. Robot, is an unexpected exploration of how love, marriage, and family can be a real trip. When a couple finds an old flip phone in the jungle on an anniversary getaway, they are unknowingly pulled into an unsolved mystery, a bizarre case that went cold 15 years prior when a once-in-a-century storm wiped away all the evidence. This journey through the Mayan Riviera will take you from the edge of your seat to the depths of human experience and back again. Starring William Jackson Harper, Kristen Milioti, Luis Gerardo Mendez, and Nick Offerman, the resort is streaming now only on Peacock. But based on all the information we have right now, Rob, and Rob, you yourself, that we were obviously not going to mention who, but you got it. We read an email that you received today from somebody intricately involved <laughs> with Warner Brothers production today as well. And and so this is the thing. Anyway, how do you see this and what stands out to you? Well, just quickly, this email, uh, 
the person I reached out to is somebody I implicitly respect, uh, trust, uh, has made billions of dollars in box office, uh, said this to me. Uh, I, I suspect both movies, because we're talking about Batgirl and Scoob. Yeah, Scoob, Scoob. also got oh, the, 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 the um, hold. I suspect both movies were conceptually not very good ideas to begin with. So better to sweep them under the rug and blame it on the mismanagement of the previous regime who greenlit those movies. I think if the Matrix Revolutions, and I think this is very important, was in the same situation as Batgirl and Scooby, Zaslav would have done the same thing. Arguably, the Matrix franchise was damaged by the last release, which I also agree with. I agree with as well. Uh, had the franchise been managed properly, the Matrix would have been another pillar franchise for the WB. Now it's dead, at least for the time being. Now, what I think is really interesting about this, John, is that in Hollywood, you have your management structure. You've got the people running the studio, and then you have the filmmakers. And normally, you hire the filmmakers and let them do their thing. And whatever you get, you put it out. Well, I think what, what, what David Zaslav has done is he said, you know what? No longer. You don't get to have a franchise anymore. And we're going to, and I would say, if you look at the, the franchises, our beloved franchises, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's Star Trek, whether it's Doctor Who, whatever, the creators of these franchises, I think all of them across the board, what David Zaslav has done is he's put everyone on notice. We're, we're no longer going to be like, oh, you filmmakers will give you a job. Go make something. They're saying, no, we're going to do what we should have been doing from the very beginning. We're going to watch you. We're going to watch what you've done. We're going to see every part of the process. Now, from a creative standpoint, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you're going to now. Kevin Feige has been doing this since the beginning. Yes, he has. I'm he so hires, glad you mentioned he that. Hires, he hires a James Gunn. He's like, James Gunn, you don't get to go do James Gunn stuff. We want you to bring the James Gunn-ism to the Guardians of the Galaxy, but you're working with us. We're going to watch what you do. We are going to collaborate because Kevin Feige knows. We've never had, we haven't had studio regimes. It used to be that the studio heads in the days of yore, they knew what was a good story. Because it wasn't some corporate-minded, ooh, we're waiting for our AT&T bonuses. It's these are not just Ivy League educated business people that look like good corporate hires. David Zaslav's like, man, if you're not making a good movie that I want to see, boom, I'm swinging my sword. You're done. This better be freaking great. And if it's not great, all no, all no. I don't have to worry about executives telling me all no because everyone in Hollywood's like William Goldman in his great book, Adventures in the Screen Trade, said no one in Hollywood knows anything. That isn't true. <laughs> the problem is the people in power didn't know anything. Right. Nowadays, they do. They can look and go, hmm, is this really a great franchise property? I liked Matrix. What was it? I don't even remember what it was called. Oh, God, I didn't. Matrix. I wanted to. Resurrection. I, but, uh, Resurrection? Uh, Resurrection. Yeah. I liked it. It wasn't a good Matrix movie. I liked it from a conceptual standpoint. I'm like, this is interesting. Not a good movie. I liked it. But it wasn't good. And if I had read the script, I understand what Lana Wachowski was trying to do. But I would have said, Lana, this isn't what made The Matrix money. This is not what people want to see. I understand what you were trying to do. But this isn't the movie the studio should make. And nor should the franchise accept it. By the way, uh, with that, I, I forgot to read one final thing. Warner Brothers did put out an official, an official statement today. Uh. And this is the official statement that Warner Brothers put out regarding the cancellation of Batgirl. By the way, confirming that they have indeed canceled it. <laughs> Warner Brothers said the following. The decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it relates, as it relates to DC Universe and HBO Max. In other words, we're no longer going to put out shit <laughs> and we're not going to make stupid movies only that are going to go directly to streaming. We want DC belongs the most respect and it deserves to be on the big screen and our fans deserve to have excellence put into these movies. That is their shift in leadership strategy. Let me start that from the beginning. The decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership strategic shift as it relates to the DC universe and HBO Max. 
Leslie Grace is an incredibly talented actor, and this decision is not a reflection on her performance. We are incredibly grateful to the filmmakers of Batgirl and Scooby Holiday Haunt and their respective casts, and we hope to collaborate with everyone again in the near future. That, again, is uh, the official HBO statement. Now, remember, one of the big things David Zaslav had to do when he came in was to clean up the mess that Jason Kalar made about ruining their relationships with everybody. I think it's very key that they put in there, hey, 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 artists. Uh, us pulling the plug on this is not Leslie Grace's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's the last guys. It's their fault. The ones that are gone. This is their fault. So I think it's important that they kind of reach out a little bit of an olive branch to the talent and say whatever, regardless of what the truth may be. But I think it's important that they pointed out that this represents a shift in our strategy. So I don't know. I also think too that we have to mention, I think Toby Emmerich. Uh, has a little bit to blame here because he was also pushing for that strategy of day and date releases. Right. Because, you know, Toby Emmerich wants, he wanted, he, he, he sees the writing on the wall. He wanted to get over into that, that HBO max cheddar filled zone where I can get paid. I can move over and it didn't work, bruh. That's why he was out. He's got his producing deal. Chris, you, we like uh, for the last 24 hours, we've been seeing all this yeah. unfold. It's a major shift. I mean, I, I jokingly put up on Twitter right now all, every DC director with the movie Scott coming out when they see their phone ring and it's got Jordan Peele sweating. Because, I mean, you just never know. But yeah. what what is your takeaway from all this? What stands out to you and, and how do you see the movie? I mean, it's pretty unprecedented, right? I mean, it feels like this could happen to anyone right now. My heart goes out to Leslie Grace. I am so glad they <sighs> talk about her in the statement. She's so good. She's incredible. You watch In the Heights and you just go, that's a star. And she already was fighting this uphill battle with certain types of basement dwellers who were already, that's not my Barbara Gordon. People are already on Twitter and Instagram giving her shit about this, which is so, so uncool. I It just oh, it makes my blood boil. Um, that's not the thing to do, guys. It's a real human being that you're attacking. It's so messed up. So that is really, really upsetting to me. Um, Obviously, for the whole tax credit thing, they're never going to be able to show any of this footage, right? That eliminates anyone ever seeing Batgirl ever again they in any monetize. way, shape, or form. If they of do this write, make it as a tax write down, yes. they will never be able to monetize it. So there's that. So I understand that kind of idea about getting their money back. Did we cancel the wrong movie? <laughs> Did we did we cancel the wrong one? Because if we're talking about restoring a brand and a brand's image. I'm, I'm floored that this is worse than uh, the Killing Joke animated film, which I know it was animated, much smaller budget and everything. But if we're talking about restoring the brand of a character, restoring this and all of that, I can think of a character that's a big part <laughs> right. of but, the WB. But, but my, two, my, my two things about that, what makes that, that situation different, and you, you, I, my frustration over WB's handling of the Flash is well yeah. documented. But what I will say is this, is that the two fundamental differences between the Batgirl situation and the Flash situation is, number one, from everything we're hearing from everyone, the Flash movie is actually quite good. I mean, again, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But you guys have read the same things I have. Mm -hmm. The people we that Rob and I both have heard from, surprisingly enough, everything we have heard from Andy Muschietti's Flash movie has been, it's actually quite good. So that's the first difference. Really good. Yeah. Not just, I mean, yeah, really, really good. good. That's the word we're hearing. The second significant difference is, Whereas they are faced with a 70 to $90 million hit, the flash is more than double of that, yeah. represents more than double of that investment. So now we're talking instead of a 70 to $90 million hit, now we're talking about a $200 million plus dollar hit. So yeah, I get it. A lot of people have been asking that same question, well, but there are two fundamental differences And that's there. why I think phrasing is really important here though, right? right? If you are talking right. about restoring a brand and all of that, then you need to address some things, guys. You absolutely I agree. do. So there's that. I also, I just... This makes me nervous, and I, I have produced very little, and it's been very small scale. I am very, very worried for the creative side of this, though, that you do a test screening before your work is done, and that's it. That makes me really uncomfortable about the creative process. Well, I think the word around them before that test screening has been, they've been very worried about it. Okay. I think even before, I think the test screening for them was really just more of an affirmation of what they have all kind of known. And again, remember, it's important to remember that this movie was being made under the old ownership. Yes. And this is something that the new ownership has just kind of inherited. John, I think what I love, I actually love this situation in a way because this shows that we had people that ran these studios that didn't know whether their product was good or not. 
or didn't care. Oh, oh, well, I, I think they cared. I, I, I mean, you're right. You're, you know, I, you're I right. I, I was out of line. To I say think that. they you're didn't right. know because look, my only experience was at, I worked at a very small level. I worked for Warner Brothers in feature production, so our department was in charge. I worked for uh, the senior vice president, Bill Young, and every day they showed dailies to the executives and there were other executives that would cover these films that they were their films that they shepherded into existence and they would have to go to a screening room after lunch usually from two o'clock to four o'clock and watch dailies every day i am willing to bet dollars to donuts no one does that anymore you think executives first of all they don't screen them in a screening room i'm sure everybody gets them virtually how many people, how many executives, how many executives out there who are covering these $150 million movies are watching the dailies every single day? And if they are watching them, how many of them actually know what they're seeing, if it's good or not? That's what happened when I worked at the studios 30 years ago. Now, I'm sure I, I can guarantee you because a movie, if there was a problem, I mean, admittedly, I worked on things like Nothing But Trouble which Dan Aykroyd directed. But even then, the executives were like, what the hell is this? And they didn't, they didn't know what to do or, or bonfire the vanities. But I'm willing to bet you the days of studio executives who are in charge of $200 million movies not knowing what they were making is over. Zaslav has said, you know what? You people better know what the hell we're spending our money on. And if you can't tell whether it's good or bad, I can. And what? How is it going to affect the overall image of like? Do people look at our movies and instantly think DC movies? Those are quality movies, or otherwise. By the way, there's one that's other thing exactly, I should point out. By the way, that's a very good point. One other thing we should point out is that I, I read some people, and I, I there was a little bit of confusion about this, so I totally get this. Some people were, were, had written to me and said, you know, I feel bad. Like, you know, John, you had said when Jason Clark was moving everything to streaming that that like kind of double cross some people because they were going to make money on the box office like individual actors or producers or directors had points scarlett johansson was going to make money on the box office and they hurt that remember batgirl was never going to theaters so so none of the actors directors uh whatever nobody lost any money on this the, the directors got paid the actors got paid there were no theatrical bonuses involved because it was never going to go to theaters so j just something that everybody gave which everybody is got one paid. of the reasons it was easy to do this Yes. If there was, if there was, if it was a Black Widow situation, I mean, people could have said, wait a minute, yep. where's my box office bump, yo? Like, there is talk of moving this theatrically, like they've moved. Uh, what I, the first thing I thought about was, what's up with Blue Beetle? Are we going to see that? Uh, that? Well, remember, I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, it was while under the new ownership that the announcement came out that they were moving Blue Beetle off HBO Max. I theaters. mean, that would be yeah. really interesting because that would that would be a vote of confidence yeah, for that so it project. Seemed, yeah. It was a vote Very of confidence. Very excited about that. This but had so many good things going for it, it seemed like. The Batgirl Burnside costume, Brendan Fraser. I just give, give me my movie. Well, <laughs> I want what I want. But here's the thing. I mean, what I love about this is is this kind of thinking might present or prevent. Remember Pitoff's? Catwoman movie? Oh, yeah, I remember that. I mean, I One love, of the three worst I love movies Sharon ever. Stone. I will watch Sharon Stone read the phone book. But my God, I look at my quarter scale Sharon Stone statue, and every time I see it, I'm like, why did you agree to being Catwoman? I but think I, that I, I it's bet you on the, I bet you, later. I bet you when they read the script, though, and they were hearing the pitch, like you and I both know that when you read a script, Sometimes the movie in your head is a lot better than the one that actually ends no, up being No, it's on true. Screen, I mean, right? Halle Berry, God bless her. I mean, she really shepherded that into existence. She loved the fact that when she was a kid, Eartha Kitt inspired her and all that. I get that. But you know what? Somebody has to be able to read a script in Hollywood and go, hey, this is really good. But to your point about Blue Beetle, see, I, I think this, I know some people heard about the Batwoman news and they got, oh my God, now I'm really worried about Blue Beetle. To me, this should be encouraging because... They already made the move of taking Blue Beetle, saying, you know what? No, 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 no. This important character and this project that these artists have made, we are not going to let it wallow just on a streaming service. We are putting this thing in theaters. So it's already gotten that. Support, so in a right? way, in a way, that's we can look at that as being uplifting and encouraging because if you're, because, if you're looking forward to blue beetle yeah uh, yeah and it, apparently it's better than it's than then the the axe swings the other way going well if what you were making which was once a uh direct to streaming property is good enough to be theatrical we'll release it yeah so so An axe you can tear down your house but it can also build a cabin that's exactly so, <laughs> right anyway guys 
The question is for you. And listen, I, I'm sure there are many more angles to look at uh, with this as well. And I'm sure there's a huge, wide variety of opinions. Again, all of us, including those of us sitting up on this stage right now, we've known about this for 24 hours, right? right. So we are no, all going to have some some opinions change. We're all going to have some different thoughts as new information comes out. But I'm sure a lot of you guys have some thoughts of your own as well. Whatever your thoughts are on that, and, and again, we're all just looking at this from the outside in. Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave us your thoughts.